Well, this month, March is Disability Awareness Month. Over the last 30 years, the Logan Center in South Bend has been marking the occasion with the great Logan Nose On. WSBT 22's Caroline Torrey joins us now in the studio. And Caroline, the center hopes that this shows what people of all abilities can accomplish and contribute. Those green dots and noses that you've seen all around town are a very important symbol, reminding us how much growth people with disabilities are capable of with some support and direction. Joel Hamburg has been a client at the Logan Center since 1971. His mom, Sally, says this place has impacted their lives more than she can say. I just can't imagine our lives without Logan. Uh, it has really enhanced Joel's life tremendously, and by virtue of that, has enhanced our lives as a family. Joel now has a job at Logan Industries. He works on a team to pack and weigh cat food that's sent to stores to be sold. He and many others are able to gain employment skills and earn wages there. When he's not working, it's easy to see he's eager to get back there. I've done that. Uh, Just a minute, Joel. Uh, he's anxious to get to work. <laughs> About 16 years ago, Joel moved into an apartment in Logan's supported living program. His roommate, now one of his close friends. Sally says it's been a dream to see Joel become an independent adult. Ever since then, he has really found more independence and loves his life. He always did enjoy life, but this has been a dream for him. Matt Harrington is the president and CEO at the Logan Center. People of all abilities can be contributing members of our community. They all have unique and special talents that are shared all throughout the community. So we want to bring awareness to that. In addition to Logan's housing and employment services, it offers a studio program that encourages expression and helps social skills. The Hamburg family is thankful for Logan's continued support that's helped Joel develop into a successful 48-year-old adult. It's probably one of the best resources in the community. To show your support for the Logan Center, you can purchase merchandise, including those green noses. It's also hosting community events and a big luncheon next week with proceeds going towards services. For locations and ticket sales, log on to logancenter.org. Bob and Leanne. You know, right now, police are gathering evidence trying to figure out what led to a fight that injured three people. It happened this morning at a home in Granger. WSBT 22's Caroline Torrey is at the live desk. Caroline, these people were hurt by a knife. Police say they all live at the home. A man, woman, and teenage boy were all taken to the hospital suffering from knife wounds. In the light of day, porch lights still on. This warm greeting visible to anyone who passes this home on Tecumseh Drive in Granger. May God bless this home and all who enter. But just before 9 this morning, the peace and harmony of the entire household was disrupted. Other members of the household at least witnessed or heard parts of this altercation. Police found a man, woman, and a 13-year-old boy with knife wounds. All three were taken to the hospital. Police believe the man, now identified as 41-year-old Michael Tagalog, was the aggressor. St. Joseph County Police Assistant Chief Bill Thompson says his severe injuries were possibly self-inflicted. We have some detectives that are taking statements from some folks who were in the house at the time to try and give us a little bit better information as to how this whole thing unfolded. Police piecing evidence together at the crime scene for a good chunk of the day. Michael Ryan lives in the neighborhood a short distance away. This Labor Day, he's spending his time doing yard work and cleaning the gutters on his house. He can't believe what happened on the usually quiet streets. It's sad, really, because usually everybody is pretty nice and forgiving and I feel for them. I, I hope they're okay. The woman was treated for hand injuries, but she's now out of the hospital. Tagalog is still being treated at the hospital for serious injuries, while the boy is also there for non-life-threatening wounds. Right now, this is still an active case. Police are working with the prosecutor's office to determine if charges will be filed. At the live desk, I'm Caroline Torrey, WSBT 22 News. The call came in about 2.30, and it all happened right here behind me. You see the road is open right now. A garbage truck is coming through, but it happened up at this bend in the road here. This is a uh, country. Country Club Road and Fillmore Road here in St. Joseph County. This is just north of State Road 2. We've learned that it is a single car accident. The car went off the road at this bend. Uh, one man died at the scene and a woman was thrown from the vehicle. So right now she is being treated in the hospital for her injuries. So at this point, uh, we do not know the names of the people involved and we do not know what exactly led up to this accident. But the fact team is investigating and we will bring you anything new that we learn coming up here later on WSB. 22 News. Live here in St. Joseph County, I'm Caroline Torrey, WSBT 22 News.
Runners will take off on winding cross-country trails tomorrow morning with each step remembering loved ones who were taken too soon. I only had them for a short time. Jim DeLary's son Dylan was a year and a half old when he was diagnosed with leukemia. We were actually at the Warren Dunes and uh, we just, my wife seen red bumps on the inside of his legs. We took him to the doctor and boom, right away. That's when he began receiving chemotherapy. Oh, Dylan was very feisty. Um, for, for that age, he, uh, he, he definitely gave the doctors a good times and bad times. Dylan endured years of treatment, but he passed away at age four in 2001. With advances in treatment, my son could very well be here today. So that's hard to even say. The sadness of losing Dylan and thoughts of what he could have been doing now are combined with the fond memories of the life he lived. Dylan and Courtney there, they were having, having fun that day. He's kind of a, he's a ham in the middle. <laughs> a new way Jim is remembering and honoring Dylan through running. It gives me determination. I, I go for the ones that can't do it. That's exactly what he's planning to do during Steve's run, showing his support for his family and others experiencing grief and loss. Once you go through what my family went through, my wife and I, um, we look at things a little bit differently today, and I have an understanding as time goes on, the pain that maybe this family's in, maybe I can inspire somebody else to, to run and give back. Jim will be running the 10K with his teenage son, Preston. Bob and Leanne, we're learning that a fight uh, led up to the shooting outside of Frank's place. This all happened just after about 2 or 2.30 this morning. Police were alerted that shots were fired by shot spotter. When they arrived on scene, that's when they found multiple people were injured. So as you mentioned, six people were injured in the shooting, four of which were transported to the hospital. Uh, two of them walked into the hospital on their own. But at this point, we, we do not know how or why the shooting happened, but the Detective Bureau is investigating, so they are asking people to come forward through Crime Stoppers or South Bend Police if they have any information. But again, six people were injured outside of Frank's place here in South Bend. This is at the intersection of Marion Street and William Street in South Bend. We are expected to get a press release at some point today, and we will give you any updates about uh, regarding suspects or um, any of the victims' identities as soon as we know that information. But stay with WSBT 22 News. Live here in South Bend, I'm Caroline Torrey, WSBT 22 News. We know four children were hit by a pickup truck as they crossed a busy highway to get on their school bus. Now, new information is piecing together why that driver didn't stop. WSBT 22's Caroline Torrey is at the live desk looking into this investigation and new court documents detailing the crash investigation. Caroline, you were able to hear the court testimony that led up to the charges against this driver. I have to warn you, some of the following details are truly hard to listen to. Shepard told police she didn't recognize it was a school bus in front of her. She said she did see something big with lights and tried to figure out what it was. It's not clear if she realized it was a school bus bus before the crash. However, another driver behind Shepard told police she could tell there was a bus stopped with its lights activated. That witness stated she slowed down while realizing Shepard's pickup truck did not. She said the truck's headlights illuminated the children as they were crossing the road. That witness thought the vehicle was going about 45 miles per hour as it approached the bus stop. She recalled seeing the truck hitting the kids crossing the highway seconds later. Shepard told police she is typically a slow driver and before the crash, she was not late going anywhere. Three children were in the back seat of her pickup at the time. In 30 minutes, what the bus driver remembers before the crash. At the live desk, I'm Caroline Torrey, WSBT 22 News. All right, Caroline, thank you. New this morning, St. Joseph County has a new jury management system. And court administrators say it will streamline communication between potential jurors and the courts. WSBT 22's Caroline Torrey is in the studio. And Caroline, this automated system is expected to make the process easier for citizens and the courts. Until now, thousands of questionnaires were printed, put in envelopes, and mailed in a very cumbersome process. Then people had to write out their responses and mail them back. But this new system does not involve pages and pages of paper. Instead, potential jurors will receive a pink postcard letting them know to complete their questionnaire. Jurors will be able to complete them three different ways through a website, via text message, or over the phone. When a jury summons arrives in the mail, people can use the new system to then submit requests to be excused or defer that to another date. St. Joseph County Circuit Court Administrator Lisa Plenser says this new system should boost questionnaire responses from potential jurors and responses to summons. 
In order to receive a fair jury trial, we're asking people to participate because we need a really good cross-section of our community. That's really what the jury trial by jury system is all about. And in order to get a fair jury trial, you need to be tried by a jury of your peers. So the bigger cross-section of our citizens participating in jury service is a better way for us for people to get a more fair trial. The new software was paid for in part by a court improvement grant from the Indiana Supreme Court. The first postcard sent out by this new system should be sent out by the first week of January. Leanne?